Today we're going to look at the new API Explorer bundled with Service Stack v6 and how you can get the most out of this feature for your new and existing Service Stack projects. Service Stack's API Explorer is a dynamically driven UI generated from your own Service Stack APIs. It provides an easy way to explore, test and discover your APIs for your team and customers alike. Tooling like Postman or Swagger UI provide similar functionality, however they rely on complex specifications that need to be either manually maintained in a YAML file or additional integration. API Explorer is native to Service Stack so can map and infer your APIs automatically without any additional effort. This allows for a better developer experience by making every service you build instantly usable through API Explorer. If your project already uses the Metadata Feature plugin, which is enabled by default, then by upgrading to Service Stack v6, all your services will be available in the API Explorer user interface. To see how this works, let's start with a new Service Stack project to see the API Explorer experience out of the box with Service Stack v6. First, we will start with an empty web project by going to servicestack.net forward slash start or the Getting Started page on the Service Stack website. Here we can provide a name for our project, select the web template to download the zip of our newly created project. Once we've unzipped this to a new folder, we can then open the new solution with our favorite.NET IDE. Here we will see the standard four project service stack solution structure, including our Appos project, service interface, service model, and tests project. Running our new application for the first time without any changes and navigating to forward slash UI, we are greeted with the API Explorer user interface. Here we can see our Hello service which comes with the template on the left hand menu under APIs. Clicking on this Hello service in the API Explorer, we will see an interactive form to test the Hello service itself. Providing a name and clicking submit, we can see all the details about the response. First, we have the body which can be viewed in three different modes, pretty, raw, or preview. Pretty is just the formatted JSON response, raw shows us exactly what is being returned in the body without modification, and preview is a friendly HTML view of the same response. The form for submission we see here for the hello request is dynamic based on the request DTO itself, including different controls for different property types. For example, an integer will use a number control, an enumeration type will be a select menu, and a date time will have a date selector. If for whatever reason these dynamic controls controls don't map to your type, you can specify the JSON request body yourself using the JSON tab rather than the dynamic form. The data in the form and the JSON request body are kept in sync so you can switch between them as needed without losing any changes. Next in the response we have the headers tab. Here we can see a table of the response header key value pairs from our hosted application. And lastly we have cookies. HTTP only cookies can't be shown since the browser keeps them locked away from the client for security reasons, but non HTTP only cookies will be displayed here. All this functionality is similar to tools like Postman, but with API Explorer it knows the structure of your messages, so without any additional effort we get dynamic forms for all your services. Looking at the top of this screen we can see that this functionality for testing your web services is under the API tab. We also have details and source code tabs. Navigating to details we can see additional metadata about our service. We can see the routes that it's available on, a table of the request and response DTOs and the default HTTP verb used by API Explorer. The name of the hello and hello response DTOs are also links. We can click on these to show the C-sharp definitions for the DTOs and any dependent types. Lastly, we have the source code tab. This provides a full step-by-step -step breakdown with source code for how to work with specific services in the language you want. As of Service Stack v6, this feature supports nine languages, which are C Sharp, TypeScript, Dart, Java, Kotlin, Python, Swift, VB.NET, and F Sharp. This functionality is driven by the same systems that are used for our Add Service Stack Reference feature, which is available in most popular IDEs. All this functionality is available for any service you create without having to do any additional work. As an example of this, let's create a goodbye service that takes a name and a language. 
the language we will make as an enum of supported languages that the requester can specify. One thing to notice is we are not creating the service in any different way than you normally would. We have our service method taking the goodbye request and returning a goodbye response. Once we have created our new service, we can rerun our application. Navigating to forward slash UI, we can see our new goodbye service on the left hand menu in the API Explorer interface. The language enum shows only valid options in a select control automatically, enabling us to avoid easy mistakes when testing our API. Going to the details tab, we can also see the definition of the goodbye language enum. As well as providing a friendly UI to test your services, we can also optionally enrich our services with additional human friendly metadata using a series of C-sharp attributes. For example, adding the tag attribute to our request DTO means we can categorize our APIs into different groups. Let's tag the goodbye request as custom and the hello request as built in. Rerunning our application, we can see our services now have their own submenus. Extending it further, let's add a description attribute to give more information about the use of the service. We can also add a note attribute about the service, allowing us to add HTML to give even more context to users. Here we can see adding text with a link to an external site as an example. The description attribute also works on properties, allowing for basic documentation about how each property should be used in the context of this service. The description information even filters down into the generated code comments for the DTO, as we can see in the source code tab, or by clicking on the DTO itself from the details tab. The details tab is also customizable by extending the API Explorer user interface itself. API Explorer is written using an alternative distribution of the view framework optimized for progressive enhancement called Petite View. This allows developers to drop in a Petite View component that follows a simple naming convention. These components can create rich documentation for your services inside the details tab of the API Explorer. We have examples of this in the Service Stack framework itself. Here is the built-in Authenticate Service Details tab where we have included relevant videos and documentation links. Custom Petite View components can also be dynamic. For example, in our Jamstack templates, the to-do CRUD services have custom content in their Details tab which is registered from a single HTML file. The view changes depending on which DTO details page is being loaded and shows other related operations in a dynamic list. Let's create one for the goodbye service by creating a HTML file in a path recognized by API Explorer. Inside your app host www root directory, we will need to create a folder structure of modules forward slash UI forward slash docs. Inside this new directory structure, we'll want to create a HTML file. Creating a goodbye docs.html file, we first need to register this as a component with petite view using a script block with a declaration of app.components. This method is passed an object with a property name of the request DTO name followed by the doc suffix, in this case goodbye docs, which has the value of an element ID. The element ID should be used in a template element, which is where your custom HTML will live. For this example, we'll use the available Tailwind utility classes and some plain HTML to create our own style to some simple documentation. Without needing to restart your application, we can refresh our goodbye API details page and see the results. If we're using .NET Watch, we also get hot reload for our changes. This makes the development cycle of custom details info extremely productive, and you can instantly see your changes as soon as they're saved. Moving on, let's look at a more complex example by incorporating another high-level feature in Service Stack. Auto Query and Auto Gen services also show up in API Explorer since they themselves are also Service Stack services. Adding the Chinook sample database and Auto CRUD Gen using the Mix tool, we automatically get managed SQLite tables using generated services to explore, test, and discover functionality with just a few commands. If you want to then customize all the metadata about these services, we can migrate from generated services to code first services and attribute as needed. We can do this by using the X tool. The following command requests your local service tech application to generate all the runtime DTOs for your generated services and save them locally to be used in your project. We can then take the generated DTOs and add the metadata attributes we want to enhance our CRUD services. 
We now have fully functional CRUD services with custom metadata all accessible automatically using a friendly web user interface. These services can now be used by anyone in your team or company just as easily as they could be used by your customers. The source code tab with full source examples gives developers a step-by-step -step instructions for how to connect to your CRUD services with any of the nine supported languages. API Explorer also works with restricted services and we automatically get a login screen based on the registered authentication providers in your project. For example, let's mix in auth and authdb as well as restrict our hello service using the validate is authenticated attribute on the request DTO. Rerunning our application and we can see our lock symbol is now present and we are prompted to sign in if we try and use the hello service. Since the mix auth automatically adds the credentials auth provider along with the Google, Facebook and Microsoft OAuth providers, we can see these options present on our login form. Looking at the details tab and we can see the message stating authentication required and in the source we can see a new validate request attribute for is authenticated. Which brings us to validation itself. Validation errors are automatically bound to the related field on error, giving us additional context of which field the error was related to and the error text itself, all driven by the validation rules related to that request in your service stack application. For example, let's validate that the name property for our hello service is not empty. First, we will add the validate not empty attribute and add the response status property to the hello response DTO. We need to add response status to the hello response since it specifies the structure for our validation error messages. If we now try to send an empty name, API Explorer shows us the validation error contextually related to the property input. The last type of customization we'll look at is the input controls and form layout themselves. Let's use a service operation with quite a few properties as an example. Create customer is another operation we moved from a generated service to a code first service. While this form is functional, let's make it easier to use. On the properties of the create customer request DTO, we can use the C sharp input attribute to change attributes on the HTML input element itself. For example, the phone property is of type string and therefore uses the text input type. Using the input attribute, we're going to change the type to tell, provide a pattern for international phone numbers, and also a placeholder. The options for the input attribute mirror that of the HTML input element, giving us a lot of control. Populating other properties with the input attribute and running our application again, we can see we've got some visual and behavioral changes. We can also change the form layout so we can group controls more logically. We can specify our custom form layout by using the apphost.configure operation method. Specify the type of your request DTO with the configure operation method. When overriding your form layout, it's in the structure of rows then columns in the nested list. So grouping controls like city, state and postcode in the same row allows us to control the presentation. Instantiating a new row, we then use the input.forStatic method for each column, specifying again the request DTO type and property you want in that column in the following Lambda expression. Running our application again, we have our customized form layout, and our customizations from the input attribute apply directly to our request DTO properties. ServiceStack's message-based design enables high-level functionality to be driven by the fundamentals of your API. API Explorer is yet another example of how well-defined message-based APIs can be leveraged to generate value right from the beginning. By adding additional metadata attributes straight onto your message contract DTOs means everything is in one place. This approach avoids any sync or translation issues since you don't need to maintain separate text-based specifications that can be time-consuming, error-prone, and complex to integrate with third-party tooling. API Explorer's integration with Service Stack means you get all this functionality by default whenever you create a Service Stack service. Well that's it for this video, a quick reminder if you don't already know, Service Stack is now free for individuals and open source projects, so come and join us on Discord or the GitHub discussion and let us know what you think about high level features like API Explorer and show the community what you're building. And as always, thanks for watching.